next on to Rivas, where the Nigerian Navy has arrested a man for allegedly attempting to bribe its personnel with a sum of 700,000 naira in Port Harcourt. The suspect was taken into custody at the Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder as he tried to secure the release of exhibits seized in the ongoing offensive against crude oil theft. Senior reporter Uchekoro reports. The suspect on red shirt arrived at the Nigerian Navy ship Pathfinder and was confident of success in his mission. He leads personnel to identify his seized boat containing 80 drums of diesel alleged to have been stolen, unaware that he was the subject of a sting operation. With our cameras hidden, we captured his every move till he returns to conclude the transaction with the most senior Navy officer on the base. It was at this point that he realized something was wrong. Open the door. Uh, uh, what? Open the money. What is it? Okay, sir. Open the money. No. Okay. Carry it now. Yes. What is it? For the Navy, this is an example of the pressure its officers face on a daily basis to compromise the fight against illegal oil bunkering and other forms of economic sabotage. So he has come today to come and claim his boots. And then he has equally got money, which is now claiming that uh, it's not, but we all know what this money is meant for. And this is how they go around trying to you know, subvert the, the, the resolve of people to do the right thing. As the money belongs to me, I did not bring, I did not, I did not came here with the money to pay for anything. I collected this money from, uh, from a customer. My boat is not there. When I, when I got there, I'm not, I'm not the owner of the boat. I don't have any boat there. It's my friend that has boat there. It's my friend boat. The Navy also stormed the fishing settlement in Degema local government area described as one of the major sites for illegal refining of crude in River State. During the operation, this wooden boat was seized. Hidden in its cargo area were pipes and other equipment used for stealing crude oil and construction of new artisanal refineries. 13 suspects were caught. From the equipment you've seen out there, these people cannot purchase those equipment. It's way beyond them. That means there are people seated in Port Harcourt City or elsewhere who procure these things. Women and children were also found at this illegal refining site despite the tragic death of hundreds of people at a similar location in Imo State still fresh in the minds of Nigerians. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Degema. Out to Imo State, where two persons earlier today lost their lives after an explosion rocked Adax Oil at Izombe Oguta local government area. The Imo State Police Public Relations Officer Michael Abatam, who confirmed the incident, explained that the Commissioner of Police in Imo immediately drafted the command's anti bomb unit, as well as some operatives of the command, to the area to prevent any breakdown of law and order. A source in the area who spoke with TVC News said the two victims had been trying to make their way into the Adax oil facility before the bomb exploded and killed them. He alleged that the men were responsible for the killing of a policeman at Agua on Tuesday in a bid to have unhindered access to the oil facility. And the Nigerian Bar Association Section on Public Interest and Development Law has condemned the attempt by the National Assembly to criminalize ransom payment by families of victims of kidnapping. The NBA says those who pay such monies do so out of desperation because of government's failure to secure lives, which the legislature must address instead. Kemi Foladeyemo reports. The gathering was geared at updating journalists on the NBA Spidel's forthcoming conference to be held in Sokoto State from May the 22nd to the 26th. The NBA section tasked with serving public interest also spoke on some pressing national issues. Recently, the Nigerian Senate passed a bill imposing a minimum of 15 years in jail for anyone who pays a ransom to free a kidnapped victim as a way to discourage the rising spate of abductions in Nigeria. But the section calls the move a suicide mission. It is very appalling, therefore, 
that the same country that has failed to provide security to the people it governs is embarking on a suicide mission of criminalizing ransom payment by the very victims that are helpless and desperate to save the lives of their loved ones. This piece of legislation under contemplation lacks logic and wisdom, and the House of Representatives is hereby advised to jettison the bill without any further consideration. It does not make any sense at all. Instead, the legislature is strongly advised to focus our laws that will strengthen national security and protection of lives and properties. The group also urges Nigerians to be responsible on their choice of the next president so as to avoid what it calls the grave errors of the past. We refuse to believe that Nigeria is under a curse. If there is any cause whatsoever, let us consciously as a nation and vigorously break the yoke of that cause collectively and choose a destiny of progress and growth. Let Nigerians arise from slumber and insist on leadership with antecedents, a leadership that can take us to our desired destination. It is possible if we collectively push for it. The state of the rule of law and preparations for the 2023 general election in Nigeria are among the issues to be addressed at the conference. Several eminent speakers, including the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Mohamed, and the NBA President, Olumide Apata, are billed to attend. Kemi Foladiemo, TVC News, Lagos. Students of various higher institutions and youths earlier today gathered in their number to protest in Benin City against persistent school closures following the strike of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The students who gathered at the popular ring road in Benin City with various inscriptions on their placard called for an end to the ASU strike. They threatened to continue to occupy the streets until the strike is called off to enable them to return to school. <laughs> We are here because uh, we are tired of staying at home. For the past uh, how many weeks and months, we have stayed at home without receiving lectures. And we are students, a course of four years has come to seven years, and is on court for. And recently we heard that the Minister of Education State purchased for. Where is that money coming from? Where is that money coming from? So, with the students, we are angry, and the only way we can show our grievances is by coming here. Hey, 